morning HPC. Well, this time in a week's time, you'll be on your own. I hope you won't have stopped reading your Bible, but I do hope uh, that you will have um, been in touch with the Good Book Company and ordered another set of Explore Bible Reading Notes um, and be beginning to go on with the Lord in uh, a lifetime of exploring, understanding and enjoying reading God's Word for yourselves. I'll try and put the link, uh, I'll, I'll try and remember to put the link underneath this video. Uh, I think there'd still be time for you if you wanted to, if you haven't done that, um, to order a copy. 1 John chapter 3 verses 16 to 24 um, encourages us of the freedom there is in knowing the Lord and having our sins forgiven by him in knowing that we belong to him, that he lives in us. Uh, but the first place that John goes is to demonstrate our love and say our love has an outworking. So we get in verses 16 to 18, don't we? Uh, the fact that a, a Christian's love flows from and resembles the love that Jesus has for his people. Uh, and to the point of almost painful practicality, this love is to be something which marks the life of a believer. Uh, the, the notes, I think, are very pointed, aren't they, in the application bit, where it's, they say, oh, what are you going to do in the light of having received God's love, in the light of um, not just loving with word and tongue, but in action and in truth? Well, that must flow out from our lives into a genuine concern for and demonstration of love for others, particularly other Christian believers. Um, uh, obviously Jesus' love on the cross wasn't just a warm feeling, it, it practically did something for us and our love is to likewise uh, demonstrate that love for others. And the evidence of this love, as imperfect as it might be, the evidence of this love is to cause us to be confident that we do belong to him. We are his people. Uh, and remi it reminds us that God knows what is really true of us. Uh, in verses 23 and 24, he begins to sort of um, mesh together the three different tests which he's laid out um, uh, for those who aren't sure whether they're Christians or not. Uh, and he begins to speak of the connection between uh, the right belief in verse 23 Three, uh, right love in verse 23 and right living in verse 24 or namely obedience um, uh, and say that all of those are grounds for us to be confident that we belong to the Lord uh, and although 1 John chapter um, 3 doesn't emphasize the role of the spirit in this assurance in the way that um, uh, John does in his gospel for example we do here see um, mention made of the spirit and of his work in our lives uh, and says John says that the spirit of course is a is a guarantee uh, that um, that we live in him and that he more significantly lives in us um, elsewhere in the uh, in the New Testament we get that language of guarantee a down payment of our eternal salvation so new belief new behaviors new loves all generated by the spirit are evidence of uh, um, the Lord's work in us and should be a reassurance of our relationship uh, with God the Father. A and in all this we remember the great consolation of 1 John chapter 20. When our hearts um, con uh, condemn us, when we've done something, we've blown it, we've said something terrible, we've, we've thought something vile, when we've behaved appallingly and and our consciences say, look, Rory, you know, you've, um, you've completely blown it this time. Uh, Jesus won't want anything to do with you. Or, uh, or we, we feel really distraught about our sin. Um, we hear this proclamation um, of, of God's um, uh, acquittal of us, if you like, from the, the sentence of condemnation and of death, which our, uh, our sins deserve. Uh, and and we're reminded that that is more powerful than anything our hearts may tell us. 
And it's not, of course, because God doesn't see everything that we've done or know all our failures. Quite the contrary. Verse 20 says he knows everything, but he forgives us. And that is a huge liberation, a huge lifting of the weight of our um, a condemnation from our, our lives. And, and Jesus' marvellous love means we're also liberated from selfishness. In the light of that uh, freedom, uh, we are free um, to begin to pray in such a way that our concerns are God's concerns, which is where we get to in verse 22. We are, we are to receive from him anything we ask, not for new cars and longer holidays and more money, um, but what pleases the Lord, what pleases him. God gives us his spirit, which enables us to do two things, to obey his commands and to remain, uh, to abide in God. So our priorities, having, having had that happen to us, our priorities become the priorities of heaven and not of earth. HPC, I pray that you'll have a really good day living with the priorities of heaven because you are a child of heaven, no longer a child of